So is there a Borg in our future? Everybody knows what a Borg is, right? Star Trek? Actually, yes! Borgs is short for cyborgs. How many of you are cyborgs? That's a question we're going to come back to a couple of times. In 1960, yeah, I saw a hand or two, and, you're going to, and more of you are going to raise your hands in a minute. <laughs> so, in 1960, two NASA scientists named Manfred Kleins and Nathan Klein coined the term cyborg. And, and they did so by asking the core question. We're sending people into space. This is the height of the space race, you know, John Glenn, the whole shebang. And, uh, and they say, which is easier to do? To create a bubble in which humans can survive in space, this very harsh new environment that nobody had been to yet when these guys coined the term, or modify the human body so people can survive in space without all of this artificial bubble around them? Their answer was, modify the human body. From that, from that particular idea sprang this whole concept of cyborgs. And we have all kinds of mythology built around it. We have two types of cyborgs throughout our science fiction. Everybody knows Commander Data, right? Yeah. <laughs> My daughters were in love with him at one point. Anyway, and he was fully functional. But... <laughs> So, and he's sort of an android cyborg type. And then there is the Terminator. There are human helper cyborgs and bad killer cyborgs. And that's the dichotomy. That's all we've got whenever we think about cyborgs in the future. The reality is, oh, I like that part. Uh, the reality is they come in a variety of forms. Anybody remember the $6 million man? You're all too young. Yes, I remember. Oh, okay, all right, great. And, 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 the, and from the beginning of the show, they ran the music and they showed him running in slow motion, and they said, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We can make him better than he was, better, stronger, and faster. And we're there right now with people. We do it all the time, in all kinds of ways. We are becoming cyborgs. Um, there are two types, one with an electronic feedback loop and one without, but let me just suggest a few of them. Anybody who has an artificial lens, if they have had cataract surgery, anybody in that category? I am. Uh, not quite the same, <laughs> but close. Pacemakers, anybody with a pacemaker? Insulin pumps, any diabetics? Artificial hearts, I doubt there's anybody in this room with an artificial heart. Uh, Dick Cheney's not here. Dr. Pennington, I believe, has uh, an artificial yeah, yeah, right. And then without uh, electronic feedback, stents and arteries, pharmaceuticals, anybody know about those? Uh, optical lenses, there's the context. We are doing this all the time. So the question is, how many of you in the audience are cyborgs? Nobody's going to raise their hand. <laughs> we, okay, some of you are. I'm a cyborg. I'm becoming more cyborg all the time. And so is most everybody else. How many of you have friends, neighbors, loved ones who are cyborgs? This is the normal process whereby I would contend we are becoming another species. And there are more possibilities for the future, and Iron Man is one of them. Where we can have exoskeletons and uh, heads up displays that are embedded in the human brain. Uh, and of course, Iron Man. Uh, and, and we are in the process of doing this, and it raises all kinds of interesting questions for us. I love this quote, by the way, from Ken Warwick, which is hard to read, but I'll read it to you. We need cyborgs, not robots. Robots are just trouble. Our robots have roughly the equivalent of a 50 to 100 brain cells. That means they are as, about as intelligent as a slug or a snail or a Manchester United supporter. So, as we become cyborgs, and you can see artificial limbs, 
we are starting to make decisions and starting to deal with the political process of what this means for us long term. Debates over stem cell research. Anybody remember that stuff from a few years ago? Debates over cloning. That kind of stuff. Uh, debates over things like designer babies. Modifying the human genome before a child is born to make them smarter, faster, quicker, better, prettier, whatever it happens to be. That's all part of this process. And we have to begin to ask the question, and this is actually kind of serious. What potentials that are out there should be mandatory? What should be permitted or, or, or forbidden? And what should be permitted but regulated in a variety of ways? Those are core questions. I believe, everybody Everybody know the board queen? Uh, no. Yeah, she is hot. <laughs> I believe that these are fundamental questions for the future because we are becoming cyborgs. Will this become a new species, which I like to refer to as Robo Sapien? With that, let me close and ask you once again, how many of you are cyborgs? How many want to be a cyborg? All right. And, uh, and I will quit at that point. Thank you. He was so good last time that we were like, we need a little Q&A with Dr. Lanius. And Dr. Lanius, I have a question again. What is your job title? Of course title? you do. What is your I job I am senior curator in space history at the National Air and Space Museum. How many of you have been to my museum? Woo! And we never get tired of telling everybody it's the most visited museum in the world. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> there are more kids running wild in there than anywhere else. Yeah. As we were back there, it was like, why is he getting so many laughs? Isn't he supposed to be the expert? I'm the expert. Is this where they bring the people? You must kill in lecture. Do you do well in lecture? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Audience, any questions for Dr. Lanius? Yeah, right up here. You can have a cyborg part and change part of your body. What part would you change? Any part of your body could you turn into a cyborg part. What would it be? Great question. Great question. Great question. You want to take this one first? Oh, I'll <laughs> this, is a, this is a PG. This is a PG show, right? Yes. Oh, no. I want a cyborg brain. Oh, damn. Cool answer. God, I was really not going to choose the long investment answer, I don't think. Next, do we have another question? You would choose brain? Why not? Yeah. Wouldn't that give you the brain of a slug or a snail at that point? No, cyborgs have human parts. Oh, oh holy. Suck it. <laughs> another question. I don't have a cyborg. That was a great question. Anybody? Somebody have a question for Dr. Lonnie? Somebody to, let's do one. Yes, in the pink shirt. Pink shirt. Will data ever be a reality? Why not? Yes. Will data ever be a reality? <laughs> yes, that counts as a question. That's the only question. I would. Data's a good-looking man too. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions. Yes, you sir with the mohawk. You got your mic right there. Your mic. Shut up! <laughs> Go back to the car. Now to everyone you just described, how many of them will I be able to beat simultaneously and sir wisely? <laughs> All of them! Your death will be quick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lonnie, let's give him a round of applause!